look around you. Now, look a little closer. Don't you notice that architecture is like a reflection of any culture? It defines our lives through the spaces we live in. Each building, bridge, public area and even layout of a city tells a story of a bygone era. Behind each style lies not a casual trend but a period of urgent experimentation directed towards answering the needs of a specific way of life. Thus, we decided to compare the architectural charms of Prague, Zagreb, Budapest and Bratislava to learn about their history and culture through a different lens. Mainly, we identified six predominant styles. They were Romanesque, Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, Classical and Art Nouveau. Apart from these, we espied traces of Rococo and Modern too. Romanesque. It literally means Roman-like. This medieval style began circa 10th century and is characterized by semicircular arches. One can notice thick walls, round arches, small windows, sturdy piers, large towers, and decorative arcading. Though simple, St. Martin Rotunda is an epitome of this architecture in Prague. Gothic An evolved form of Romanesque, it was born during the 12th century. It consists of soaring towers, spires, and pointed arches. It seems ethereal when juxtaposed against burly Romanesque designs. We can also see that Romanesque is far simpler than Gothic architecture. Churches and cathedrals often cloak this design. It was one of the more predominant architectural styles which was easily distinguishable from others. Further examples are St. Antonin Church and St. Matthias Church. Massive masonry and solid walls were replaced by small openings and a style whose main thrust was to make light all important. To achieve this, one's focus moved from the structure parts of the building, such as its solid walls, to its columns, pointed ribbed vaults, and flying buttresses. The structure of Gothic windows evolved from simple openings to stained glass, which added a dimension of color to the available light in the building. So overall, Gothic gave us a sharp appearance and directed our gaze toward heaven. Renaissance this flourished between early 15th and 17th century. It is identified by geometric or figurative designs called graffito, which are etched into buildings' exterior. One can see orderly arrangements of columns, semicircular arches, and hemispherical domes in Renaissance buildings. This was a revival of ancient Roman forms, including the column and round arch, the tunnel vault, and the dome. Baroque the word is adapted from the Italian word barocco, meaning strange and peculiar. Indeed, it is a unique form of architecture. It began in the late 16th century and took the Roman vocabulary of Renaissance architecture and used it in a new rhetorical and theatrical fashion. It is identified by big cupolas, marble columns, ornately painted frescoes, and gold. It contains new explorations of form, light, and shadow, and dramatic intensity. It evokes feelings of sensuality, drama, grandeur, and curvaceousness. Gilded statuary, opulent ornamentation, bright colors, and rich surface treatments all add to the over-the-top feel of Baroque architecture. Classical It is identified by simple columns and pediments. Neoclassical architecture was a reaction against the Rococo style of naturalistic ornament with asymmetrical patterns involving motifs and scrollwork. It is characterized by grandeur of scale, simplicity of geometric forms, dramatic use of columns, and preference for blank walls. Some fine examples are the Art Pavilion of Zagreb and Zagreb Central Station. Art Nouveau The word has a French origin meaning new art. Hyperbolas and parabolas in windows, arches, and doors are common, and decorative moldings grow into plant-derived forms. One observes wavy lines, florid designs, and conscious ornamentation. Modern Throughout our trip, we aspired modern structures betokening development and technological advancements. Prague housed a modern church. Zagreb had a few structures too 
and this interesting building in Budapest didn't go unnoticed either. Now, look around you again. This time, look closer and name the architectural style this building cloaks and its significance. If we've done a job well, you should be able to answer that right off the bat. If not, see the video one more time and try again.